Rujita, you can start. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning to one and all. I, Ruchita Katpal, on behalf of Think India HRC, welcome everyone present with us today. Think India HRC believes in bringing to life the nationality that already exists in the heart of our students. We believe in nurturing and supporting young minds who will be future leaders to develop an India-centric attitude. Think India HRC endeavors to congregate the youth of India and nurture leaders for tomorrow. We would first like to welcome Mr. Kranti Sagar Mori. He is the convener of Think India Mumbai and we are extremely delighted to have him with us today. He is currently pursuing his PhD in tech from ICT in Pharmaceutics Department, Mumbai. Sir, we would now request you to say a few words. Yeah, thank you. Today I welcome you all. Today we are going to discuss the youth booth, uh, what condition will do for the youth. So. I will express you what is the Think India and what Think India is doing for the student. Think India is a pan-India initiative to bring together the best talent of the country and infuse them in a nation-first attitude. Our aim is to develop the nationalistic spirit and inspiring young India to be a service to society. Think India is a platform for leaders of tomorrow where they deliberate on issues of national importance raise their concern and offer innovative solution to the platform faced by India. Think India failed the need of the student with Indian nationalist string the harness this part of national preserve in furthering our aim to national reconstitution. Students from IISC, IIMB, Nimhans, NLUM and ICT, they joined together to create a joint forum for students. A formal forum took place in Art of Living Ashram, Bangalore, 2007. Think India also provide internship like Anubhuti, social internship, Vidhi, law internship, Niti for public policy. And we have Samsadi internship where 40 MPs are connected with the Think India and we provide internship to the student in certain ministry of department. We also provide the Samved in media, Sushrut in economy sector. So our aim to bring a national level students in one platform and to help in a nation building activity. So I welcome to you all, hand over to you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir, for giving us a brief view of what Think India is. Inspiration comes in different ways and for us, Charvi Ma'am, our professor in charge, is a constant source of inspiration. From guiding us on every task we undertake to offering her invaluable feedback, she is the pillar of our organization. Charvi Ma'am, we would now request you to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. It gives me an immense happiness to see all of you gathered here on the virtual platform. It's my pleasure to welcome our uh, eminence panelists, Mr. Nilesh Lele, Mr. Kalp Bhatt, Dr. Pankaj Gandhi, Mr. Sarang Gobade, and our participants for the today's panel discussion on the youth good. As we all know that youth shoulder the future of a country and it has the potential to bring about a revolution for the betterment of our country, which may be a wonderful thing considering the immense potential they possess. However, there's a constant need to effectively tap this potential. I hope our today's panel discussion would help our students to understand how they can contribute to the India's growth. I'm glad that Think India HRC is organizing this discussion, keeping in mind the Franklin D. Roosevelt quote, we cannot always build a future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. Thank you so much. I'll now request Suchita to please take it forward. Thank you, ma'am. We extend our warm gratitude towards our principal in charge, Dr. Pooja Ramchandani, who always encourages us to rise up to our true potential and has time and again given us the liberty to bring to reality every initiative we work on. Due to some prior commitments, Pooja ma'am could not join us today. We are also extremely elated to have the support of our vice principal, Dr. Naveen Punjabi with us today. We, uh, we students love to hear all the motivating lessons he sir gives us. He guides us, motivates us, and encourages us to be our better selves every day. 
due to some prior commitments sir could not be present with us today india has a unique advantage and that is a vast part of its population falls under the youth category this lifts our nation up on a pedestal considering the world view the power of you can change any nation and the same power is going to be an instrumental part in india's development with these words we use our topic for today youth booth i would now like to take this opportunity to introduce our esteemed panelists for the day ruchita uh, we have our vice principal navin pajabi sir have joined just now so uh, we can just give him yeah. some chat yeah thank, thank you uh, professor charvi and uh, thank you ruchita for the kind introduction i think uh, this is called jit just in time and uh, uh, yeah, i was with the with uh, in a prior commitment so i told her i may join but thank you so much for having me here and firstly hearty congratulations uh, on the very interesting uh, topic for the panel discussion and uh, of course uh, the panel is a very esteemed panel a very learned panel and we are all uh, looking forward to uh, the discussions and deliberations uh, personally i like the panel because uh, you get to learn the collective wisdom if you see the collective wisdom of all the panelists here it would summit to more than a century of knowledge because each is 40 plus and if you have five members you're getting um, wisdom of so many people so my my entire idea is that you should always participate in such uh, discussions and especially when there's a diverse panel it gives you diverse perspectives so uh, hearty congratulations to the teacher in charge professor chadri and the entire team for having this wonderful uh, panel and i welcome all the panelists and uh, would uh, urge you that you should ask our students to ask as many questions as possible because in my personal opinion life is all about asking the right question it may be a girl's age or a man's income uh, you know come what may you have to learn to ask the right uh, question and hence uh, i would urge you all to uh, you know uh, put forward your questions in a manner in which you can learn more with this i uh, welcome all the panelists and uh, congratulate the team members and the faculty in charge for this wonderful event all the best to you and the uh, proceedings of the events all the best Yeah, thank you, sir, for your kind words. We would now move ahead with the introduction of our esteemed panelists. Our first guest for the day is Pankaj Gandhi, sir. He has a vast experience spanning three decades and has worked with several top Indian companies. He holds thirty-two degrees in total and two PhDs. He has also been invited by the Boston University of the United States to work as a visiting research professor. Our second guest for the day is Nilesh Lele Sir, who has over twenty years of experience in India and the United States. He is a first-generation social entrepreneur, the founder and MD of Exelon Food Bio Advisors Private Limited, and director of Savardi Valley Food Foundation, an NGO working closely with farmers and entrepreneurs across Maharashtra. Our third guest for the day is Kalp Bhat Sir. He is the CEO at Association for Harnessing Innovations and Entrepreneurship under the aegis of Sardar Vallabhai National Institute of Technology, Surat. Our fourth and final guest for the day is Saram Bobade Sir. He is a social entrepreneur and co-founder and COO at Donate Card. Within four years, the organization has incubated thousand plus NGOs and mobilized more than hundred crore worth of products. with the help of 10 lakh supporters we welcome all our guests today and now it's time to commence the discussion i would now like to hand over the stage to prem who will be a moderator for today thank you good morning esteemed panelists and participants let us start with the discussion a major part of the indian population consists of youth in the upcoming years youth will play a crucial role in the growth of india what are your views on it uh, we can go forward with nilesh sir sorry who's the question for uh sir it's a opening statement uh, we want your view both of your views on this point Okay, I can go first since I am unmuted. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank the HR College as well as uh, our Vice Principal Sir, who is here, Professor Navin Punjabi, Professor Charvi Gada, 
good friend of mine, Think India Mumbai head, Kranti Sagar More, and all the other esteemed panelists. And uh, I take the privilege of calling all the students as my friends because I may look older, but uh, I don't consider myself. Vice Principal Sir said, uh, whenever I get a chance, I take this opportunity because through my last 20 years of experience and 10 years as an entrepreneur, I've learned a lot, especially in my failures. And I like to communicate those to the next generation because you don't have 20 years the way I do. Uh, so first and foremost, let us understand the demographics of India. And uh, we are a young population, median age of 28. Uh, very, uh, you know, very smart. We are coming up with... Uh, a large population of almost 140 crore plus. The whole world is looking at us as a market. So definitely we should also be looking our, at our own um, population as a huge market. We have a lot of potential, especially as we graduate a lot of engineers. So manufacturing and services industries is the two key areas where we should be looking at, uh, the youth should be looking at, because these are the two areas where a lot of value addition can be done. And through value addition, additional income generation can be done. So always remember uh, these two areas. As we go along, uh, knowledge based is something that we should be looking at as the next generation that how we can uh, increase the wealth of our nation, increase our per capita GDP uh, through knowledge based. And one last point I would like to make since I'm, I, uh, I'm an entrepreneur and I encourage a lot of people to enter into entrepreneurship that uh, uh, our economy right now has around 3% of our population as entrepreneurs. The equilibrium number is around 7%. So we need to almost double the number of entrepreneurs that we have currently. And that's another thing we should, as a next generation, you should think about being job givers rather than job. That is so true, sir. Uh, Sarang, sir, would you like to go next? Okay, sure. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me. I mean, I will say, you know, uh, after a very long that I could able to get a chance to participate in some of such of the, you know, one of the such eminent uh, event. Uh, so before, you know, start with, uh, just, just hold on. Yeah, yeah. So before to start with, like, you know, I would like to raise a few of the questions, you know. So like, did any of you ever imagine that we could able to uh, discuss about the topics like uh, mental health or menstruation or you know various other social taboo or you know how many of you get inspired by a new um, new commercial ad which maybe you know which talk about social change or which questions the uh, you know the society the society believes and we see there are a lot of movies which has been you know mostly uh, produced um, in in the topic of social change, maybe maybe for the toilets or maybe for the menstrual hygiene or girl child, um, or maybe how many of you here you know which are present in this event are or you know or or feel very super proud of what Indian women hockey has achieved you know and and went to the semifinals of of Tokyo Olympic, um, like if if. Um, whatever the questions which have arised, if you are happy with any of the, you know, or one of the notions which I've mentioned, I guess, I guess we are very much, you know, in like, in like this generation, what we call the youth of today is definitely is the foundation of new India, wherein we are questioning the social beliefs, we are questioning the social norms. Um, so what are social norms at the first place, right? So it, they are basically a social derivatives, uh, which has been imposed or which has been, you know, running from long, uh, which are the strong beliefs, which ultimately we have, we, you know, all being a part of the society are expected to follow. Uh, but the question is who, who has decided whether these norms are right or wrong. Um, and, and this is the very time in India, or this is the very time in this generation where we are asking, or we are raising questions about these norms. Uh, we are asking very critical and very you know, hard and very tough questions to, to our past generation why these norms are present. And I guess this is one of the most crucial aspects or one of the most crucial uh, crucial arena where we as, as you know, our youth have come to a long way and made a, you know, a vital progress. Um, we do see a lot, of, a lot of women entrepreneurs or women-led business coming in. We do see a lot of Medals in Olympic has been coming from from you know rural India, 
as well as as well as we also see that you know we like the youth is youth is turning to take or as as sir said that like, you know is taking for is not looking for a job but 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 trying to you know be innovative and start something of their own i guess th- this this is a very bright sign that we have a long way to go um the one of the very uniqueness which i would like to highlight about about to be like you know the young crowd is is that we have we have we are accepting the challenges we have been very, very receptive to the challenges as well as uh, uh, we have been you know also thinking we are not asked we are not just uh, you know blaming the problems which we have but we are trying to become a part of the solution uh, i guess that attitude that problem solving attitude is something which will take us to a long way um but with you know uh, as to, like when when we when we when we consider uh, like you know any problem or we always try to identify the root cause of those problems and then build an innovative and sustainable action plan and road map and then and then the, the next steps comes to like you know we have to strive hard uh, to implement it with the creative leadership and management i guess one of again one of the very reason why we could able to know um, do this progress is because of technological advancement uh, now like if we wish to take any of the you know take take like a good education we don't have to you know necessarily have to go to a top college we can very well do you know with the use of technology just google some of the you know good topics you will get one of the best lecturers and you will able to learn uh now we don't have to go to offices to do job like offices has come to you know our houses though that lead to another set of problems but i feel with the technological advancement many of the new talent which we could able, which we could able to see because of maybe you know the technological platform like tiktok or or instagram or twitter so i i strongly believe that um you know this is this is where we we can we can actually grow and with the technological advancement we have you know very very um, you know strong point or very strong advantage which will very well you know take us to a new level altogether definitely sir definitely uh kalp sir would you like to go next um sir you are on mute yeah uh, am i audible now uh, yes sir uh, first of all a very good morning to all uh, thank you so much for inviting me over here so i am one of the panelists who is still in his early 30s you know uh, not in the 40s so uh, so yeah uh, i think think india is a good forum as uh, if i talk about the startup ecosystem that i have seen grow in india in the last 10 or 11 years uh, obviously we are still Uh, around 30 40 years behind silicon valley around uh, 25 to 30 years behind say tel aviv or israel right but if you see the ecosystem in bangalore pune mumbai and eventually now in amdabad uh, so there is there is a shift and obviously bangalore is very closer to what we are trying to achieve and every now and then uh, the students or the startup enthusiasts they read about various Uh, startups becoming unicorns and now there is a new word called dragon startup right after unicorn what happens is that it's a dragon right so presently we are looking towards achieving a dragon status from one of our startups right um, but uh, uh, when i reach out to say the forum like this uh, what i wanted to share is that if you guys are looking towards entrepreneurship then do start early while you are in the first or second year of your uh, whatever course you are doing uh, the reason is that by the time you graduate you always have an option to fail at least 3 to 4 times because none of the entrepreneurs that i have seen uh, they haven't uh, got their success unless and until they have pivoted at least 3 to 4 times uh, so the idea with which you start you don't uh, close with that idea the funding that your idea receives that would be the third or fourth uh, iteration of that idea so you have enough time to uh, you know fail the second thing is uh, if i am running a company then i would uh, focus on a candidate who has failed at least twice or thrice in the life in their life right 
uh, because they know how failure feels like and they have now grown from that. So as you might have read the quote, okay, uh, once you get down, there is only the way up, right? So that is second thing. The third thing is uh, as a recruiter or as a company, company's head, I would always want people who have failed just because they have had enough experience and they value that job now. And if you compare it with the rest of the people, then they have more experience. So, you uh, have uh, job we have experience but we are freshers with experience. Kaan se, right? So, so uh, along with your studies, the kind of experiences that you can take is you take internships with companies, uh, you work with actual startups, you understand what is the startup culture. And if you are going to start a startup or business, then you need to know that you have to dedicate somewhere around 10 years of your life for this. So after graduation or if you start during your graduation, so the three years it would take for trial and error and you identify or focus on a specific idea. But the rest of the seven years would be taking from reaching, uh, from going from idea stage to finally to a maturity stage. So uh, what will happen in this time period is, say you graduate today, then uh, a friend who has taken a placement, right? Uh, that friend would be getting a fixed salary with a certain kind of increment per year, right? Whereas you will be working hard to, uh, you know, get employees, get funded, and that person would get on getting increment and increment. So there would be a materialistic progress in that person's life that you will be if mira dost hai, to usne uh, first to stay salga salary bachaya hai usse bike le liya ya scooter ya active wale liya say after two three years he or she will get married then eventually they'll have a car they'll have a house they'll have kids and on this side for 10 years you are struggling with your company and you are making a company that's worth say 200 300 cr now now if you persevere for this say seven to ten years then there comes a tragic or what we call as a tectonic shift in the lifestyles of both of these people. So that person who took a placement um, right now obviously has say two cars or some house or something and everything. But on the second half, you get funded, you uh, get your company's valuation up, you, your IPO comes up. So now your company, uh, the valuation of your company is much more than the valuation of the company that that person might be working at. So now what you have done is you have secured the future of uh, at least three generations of your family, as well as all those people that to whom you are providing employment, right? So if you have that kind of a mindset, I will struggle for 10 years, but uh, I'll be the person, for example, if I take the example of Dhiru Bhai Ambani, then Dhiru Bhai na mehnat ki, Mukesh took it to next level. But eventually the benefits are reaped by Akash and all the other children, right? So if you have a that kind of mindset, I want to business or I want to do business that in which I want to take it to my three generations, right? Then this entrepreneurship is the correct thing for you because the thing is, startup and business, there is a difference. So whenever any come, anyone comes to me and says, I want to start up, I ask them a question, that you have the first option is, do you want to start right now and sell the company in five years? Do you want to start right now and do an IPO in 10 years? Or do you want to start right now and you want it to be a family business, right? Because based on that, the entire business strategy or business model happens. So this was one thing. And if anyone tells you that, you know, go for entrepreneurship and be your own boss and uh, avoid the nine to five life, then I'll tell you that what are your life goals? Because see, nine to five life is also a very good life. Okay, you have enough time for your family, there is a work life balance. Whereas in entrepreneurship, what we face every day is uh, I have to pick up a call anytime, every time. And if you like uh, a challenge per day or per week, then you can go for a job. But if you like challenge, per minute, then please come to the entrepreneurship side because we don't know uh, even while this fall is happening, what will happen. 
I have to still review the balance sheet of my company, right? So that is the difference. And I'll request all the students or all the young people over here that when you look for uh, uh, that start, startup got funded by say 1000 crores or whatever this, you always read their balance sheet, right? You just go and check that if someone is getting so they are already in a loss of 2100 crore, right? They still have to work upon another 100 crores, right? And whenever these VCs, they provide this funding to these startups, so all of the startups may invest in it. In that case, one or two startups are the ones who give return, right? Rest of their money got wasted. And it's something that we call the investment cost, right? That you have to try or risk to take. But when you get a return, so for example, a recent example, there was this uh, uh, investor who invested some 18 CR in a company called Bharat Pay. And eventually they took an exit that is 200x. 18 CR, ke samne, they got around 232 CR or something like that. So that is a good investment, right? But that happens on like this mein se ek startup. Nahi hai hota hai. So this was something uh, I wanted to share with the uh, youth over here. Okay, when you are opting for entrepreneurship or you are looking for entrepreneurship, then please think of all these things. Another thing is that majority of the people ask me, sir, idea hai par kaise execute ho right? So the only difference between a good entrepreneur or a successful entrepreneur is that these people actually executed the thing, right? Agar aap soch rahe ho ke ye mere paas idea hai, 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 main kuch uh, the first thing you should do is when you have an idea is Share it with your friends because they are the most, you know, uh, uh, open forum that you might receive, right? That if they think that this is good, so they will certainly give you a good feedback. Chances come, hai, friends get good feedback, milne ka, but you will give an honest, you will get an honest feedback, right? That they can't do this, right? And, and always you can get uh, this thing, ke, uh, there would be people who al always help you out, right? And obviously, we are in the internet age, so you can go and just search. At least, uh, so the good thing right now is that you can learn from their mistakes and work on that model. Second thing is, if you think that you, you have a good idea or something like that, but you don't know uh, how to take it ahead, but uh, you are sure that this is unique, then get it patented, right? Because if you, like all of us have been to the movies and you might have read that uh, on the speaker, there is always written Dolby Digital, right? That Dolby sound. But Dolby is a company that only provides this licensing software to this company's player whether it be JBL, Sony, this, that, all the big names. So they have an entire model where they have just given their IP and these, these companies use that and create a you know business model out of it. So you should think about that, right? And it's, it's as easy as, you know, uh, yeah, it normal, koi bhi process karte online payment. It's a simple process. The only thing is, uh, and the fees are very low. The government fees are hardly 2,000, 3,000 rupees. So if by doing that, if you can have a lifelong, you know, passive income, then that would be great. Right? So that's that's a few things that I wanted to share. Uh, thank you. Any questions? I'll be happy to answer. That is so true, sir. Uh, Pankaj, sir, would you like to go next? Uh, sorry, sir, you're on mute. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm thankful to uh, Kranti and all the youngsters for, and um, especially the Asha ma'am for introducing me to this particular platform of the young and vibrating India, the people who are over here. So uh, let me share some of my views on what, what India can do from the perspective of new developments. I will discuss in terms of uh, what is being going on and what we can do and what were the loopholes uh, which by virtue of which we were not in a position to explore at the global level. Uh, Sir has 
Kalp sir has rightly pointed out that what are the uh, good points we can focus the as far as the entrepreneurship development is concerned. Now, the young India. What does it mean by young India? I was just looking for uh, some statistics yesterday. As I'm an engineer, so I used to love for the states and maths. So the statistics say that 62% uh, of our population is in a range of 15 to 59 years. So that is what the strength, if, if we consider 130 to 140 crore of people, 85, 80 to 85 crore people are in this bracket, 15 to 59 years of age, part of young India. Against that, 54% of our population is less than 25 years. A big strength. See, what we can say that 75 crore people are less than 25 years, which is quite bigger than what I can say that the entire US population or European Union population. So this is what the strength of our country, the population. On contrary, it is creating an issue to us. But if we take it that particular population of young people, it's a strength compared to 2000. I'm just giving the data of 2020 comparative analysis. India average age in 2020 is 29 compared to US 40 compared to European Union 46 and compared to Japan 47. So now imagine we are somewhere around 20 years, somewhere around 20 years younger than what all these countries are. So what we can do from the perspective of research, I'm, I'm just asking one question. Why we are being an Indian, we, we have seen that the young Indians are working in US, Satya Nadella, all those Google companies, big corporates, IBM, Microsoft are full of with Indian minds. Those who passed out from India, they are being trained in Indian education system and they are working over there in a much better position. Like we all passed out from NIT, IIMs. We have seen that what we can do due to certain reasons we stay in India. Now, the biggest question, why we are not in a position to produce Mark Zuckerberg like leaders, Jack Ma like leaders, Bill Gates like leaders. Though we see, I'm not, I'm also part of the same education system. Certain things which are lacking in our education system is the production of people who can have the mindset of clerical work. Though we all are, we are technocrat people, we used to say that engineers and MBA from IIM or IITs, but the mindsets which has been trained in such a way for 12 years is to produce the clerical mindsets. We are lacking in entrepreneurship skills from the school level. Just take an example. What is the reason that maximum medals right now in Olympic grabbed by the Haryana people? What is the reason? The reason is from the 2000 year, year 2000, in which Karnam Maheshwari has won the bronze medal in weightlifting. Haryana government has incorporated sports as an important subject in school. When I was in Northeast, I was doing my research in Sikkim. I was doing my research in Tripura and Assam. I used to stay over there. And for your kind information, three hours in a day are spent for the sports. So that is the reason. We need to change. We need to bring the change from the school life. The school system is set by the Britishers in India. And that is the Macaulay system. I'm just going to the back to the history of British era of 1800. Someone has said that to visit who are the beggars in India. And Macaulay has said that no one is a beggars in India. So what to do to make that these people as beggars? And they have demolished our education system of Gurukul system or madrasa, real madrasa systems. What right now what is being going on is not the real madrasa. I studied in Muslim school, though I am a Hindu. So we used to learn engineering from the school standard five. I learned elements of workshop technology, elements of engineering from, from standard five. And from standard eight to standard 10, all those kinds of what I learned in graduation of my engineering, I had already studied in standard eight, nine, and 10. And we were having board exams. 
for elements of electrical elements of mechanical engineering and this uh, all such kind of education is being imparted in the muslim schools and this is the credit and it was a granted madrasa so 50% of the students are hindus 50% of the students are muslims but the way they trained us let me tell you a fantastic education system and if if such kind of model can be propagated in our society some of the schools are there in our gujarat so if such kind of models can be propagated in our society then i am sure that change can be brought so the macole has demolished our education system and they have developed the system in such a way that our mindsets for 12 years ghode ke jaise 12 years they make us a person who can be work under the guidance or subordinates of someone they have demolished our creativity thoughts so that is what we can say that we are creative students are creative but sabko ek hi tarike se evaluate kiya jata hai if there was a famous portrait i i came across that uh, jungle mein kafi sare janavar hai janwar hai animals are there including monkey then elephant and so many others and the exams question is who can climb on the tree fast sabse pehle kon jhar pe matlab ped pe chadega but obvious elephant cannot move only monkey will succeed because it is its core competency what i mean to say if we develop an education system the new education policy which has which is going to bring the change is in line of this if we the if you go to the depth of new education policy it focused on what kind of entrepreneurship skills can be developed why project work is important in school life when we were in uh, school uh, let me confess my daughter when she was in school she was excellent in project work but after the change of the school no project work so that project work gives the creativity just like as in mba when we used to teach the students sabko aisa badi badi company mein kaam karna hai people are looking for a uh, uh, campus interview campus placements uh, 50 lakh package 20 lakhs package 15 lakhs package right now the trend in iim is people are moving towards the entrepreneurship ventures the reason is let's take a case of maharashtra that is a, a famous how many of you are aware that i don't know but in line of cafe coffee day we don't go for the uh, controversy of its owner the fantastic network set by them in line of the same hardly 10 rupees tea is available in maharashtra if you move across various areas the tea patri uh, that uh, chai wala dukan name is yevle in maharashtra i don't know how many of you are aware in maharashtra i i, I used to be over there a fantastic franchise model developed by them and can someone imagine that with 10 rupees tea they are having the franchises across the maharashtra a fantastic model let me tell you a good entrepreneurship development in gujarat if you come there are plenty of small chains now coming up with the franchises in line of this mcdonalds and pizza they are local brands in amdavad there is a famous shop on which uh, shop opera has also, also been made by balaji tele films induben khakra wala a fantastic venture developed by the females right now if you take the case studies of some of the entrepreneurs in gujarat they are hardly having school education but they are doing fantastic job with the help of some of the joint ventures and some of the technology supports by cpets and other organizations at present if we take someone has uh, saran has rightly pointed out about the bollywood the social change the f- uh, fantastic movie as far as social change is concerned is a swedish movie of sarukh khan what we can do a people who are in uh, us or in europe if they come to india and if we can develop why not we attract such kind of talents on the same line sarukh has succeeded on the another line there is a movie of uh, rajinikanth it's a dub movie he came from us to india to establish that education establishment and lots of issues created and he became a, a negative sides and those kinds of things so people want to work for india but certain systems are not allowing them to work so bollywood is a fantastic replica of what is being going on in our society let me tell you 
uh, good movies have been made which portray the social change which we can bring to the society right so new education policy is going to make the difference that is what i used to say at present if we take the uh, new companies which are been coming up those zomato is a loss making company but it's uh, ipo all of you are aware it's overwhelmed the reason is without minimum infrastructure i am not having any corporate office rather than the warehouse of my storage for amazon and flipkart in surat let me we are over here amazon is coming up with a biggest warehouse storage in south gujarat flipkart is coming with the biggest warehouse storage in south gujarat see they don't need any office mobile is their office so someone has said that work from home is a new norm so what kind of performance appraisal system to be set for the person who are working from the home this is a new challenge for the hr people in the same way ola uber without any office infrastructure they are managing their business with the help of flutter based applications in the mobile so such kind of app based business the social media marketing the digital marketing digital payment system these are new norms in india and people are moving towards the same one so what i am requesting to all the youngsters why not we produce mark zuckerberg jack ma we can if we can bring the change from the school level of our education can we incorporate or can we spend one day in a month for the development of the school people the school kids sorry if i can spare being a youth being a youth if i can spare one day in a month to educate the school kids to cultivate the creativity to cultivate the thoughts of entrepreneurship to cultivate the thoughts of research what can we do can we share our experience with them if we can bring this change then i don't think that uh, within uh, 10 years we can achieve the success in the future so uh, let me share uh, from uh, gujarat itself is an example there is one place in gujarat near to amdabad known as mesana they it is known for the production of jiru isab gul etc there are the people who are exporting isab gul to us and us people are adding isab gul in pizza we all know that it is made from the maida and it is difficult to digest in our stomach so in us those pizza which are being added with the fibers of isab gul are known as digest digestive pizza and people are earning a lot in uh, they are basically a farmers and they are earning a lot by exporting the isab gul to us so such kind of new concepts to be developed what is an emerging sector yesterday i was reading something and someone has said that if india china and uh, us will be together then there is no need if this triangle is developed then there is no need for other countries to incorporate we can uh supply the goods and supply chain to uh, under developing nations of africa and we can develop them so some new nexus will be developed so all the youngsters are being requested here to spare one day in a month go to the school educate them at least 5 hours two schools two and a half two and a half hours we can address them how can we bring the change in new india the school kids that is what i said the school kids especially those students who are in standard 5 to standard 10 i am not considering 11 11 and 12 standard that is junior jc i am not considering junior college standard 5 to standard 10 if we incorporate let me tell you sky is the limit so this is what i would like to say i am thankful to all the youngsters these are my thoughts so how can we use even if we are not in a position to go to the schools but can we address them on such kind of virtual platforms that can also be worked out very well with all these things i would like to end it up over here jai hind that is really insightful sir on the lines of what uh, pankaj sir said we see a lot of brain drain happening in india how do we encourage the youth to work in india and work for india it's open for all yeah sir it's open for all. okay so uh, i will take the opportunity uh, i myself graduated from udct now called ict four almost uh, 57 of us went to the us but let me tell you at this point in time more than 35 are back in india so this whole concept of brain drain uh, is uh, partly true but partly it's not true 
and some of the finest brains, the toppers in of our class are actually back in India. So let us not be uh, too uh, concerned about brain drain. In fact, if you ask me, I spent 10, 11 years in the US and were probably the best years of my life where I got to learn a lot and it's, I'm able to utilize it in, uh, in India. And uh, before uh, you know, I close, I would like to add a few more things that uh, if you see the growth of any country, it goes from being an agriculture to a manufacturing to a services business. And as we move up the ladder is basically doing more and more value addition. So as you do more value addition, your per capita GDP will grow up. Your As a whole, your country will become richer and individuals will become richer. So we need to focus on that. We need to move from being a, yes, we need that agriculture, the contribution of around 16 to 20% to our economy, but we also need to see how we can do much more value addition. And in fact, uh, as currently, I think we stand at around 7 billion population and it will, it's expected to reach around 9 billion by 2050. And let me tell you that India is going to be the food factory for the world. But the food, but the world is asking for certain rules and norms to be followed. So if we can actually focus on doing value addition in our agriculture and uh, food processing, also we are considered as a uh, as a pharma hub. And post uh, COVID, definitely India is going to become a big, uh, bigger and bigger pharma hub where a lot of value addition steps will be done in India. Otherwise, traditionally, what was happened was we were doing all the basic polluting steps. And the uh, final value addition and the highest value realization was happening in other countries, which has now stopped. Like simple example being uh, back in the British era, the cotton was grown in India, went to Manchester, was made into uh, clothes and was again sold to us at a, at a much higher premium, right? So the key value addition steps, slowly and steadily, India has figured it out and we are actually uh, focusing on that. And maybe we don't have the Mark Zuckerbergs and uh, the Satya Nadellas of the world, and the key reason to that is, and which I think is also changing, is that we are not positioning ourselves as a brand, a country as a brand. Like we have, uh, we have vaccinated 50 crore people. Come on, we have vaccinated 20 Australias in six months and nobody's even talking about it, right? Australia is still talking about 17% vaccination. So we are very poor in self-branding. We need to brand that. I can, uh, maybe someone is not as famous as a Satya Nadella, but I can, uh, I can introduce you to people who are equally smart. Maybe they are not branded. Similarly, we need to brand our products. We like oats and we like cranberries. We have products like, uh, now we have started calling it millets. So rebranding is definitely one key reason where India is one of the five countries who's making vaccines. Why nobody considers that? We have at least three vaccine, uh, self-developed vaccines. Nobody's talking about that. I mean, yesterday I was reading an article in CNN and they were like, uh, India was not even mentioned in the whole article. They were only talking about how UK and how US and how France and uh, Australia and all that, right? So we need to we need to put our foot down and we need to start uh, branding and uh, marketing ourselves. And uh, there are last two points. I, I know the question was different, but I'm uh, after hearing to a lot of other speakers, I feel very passionate that uh, some of people like my classmates who have come back because we mean we mean to make a difference in here. Some of us are even active in politics, and we cannot just sit on the side and say that politics is like this and like that. No, then we have to be become part of it, and we have to uh, start innovating. That copycat kind of a thing, that jugar kind of a thing, it will take you only to a certain extent. We need to have real innovations, real incremental innovations, breakthrough innovations. Why should it only come from the Western world? We have the talent, we have the infrastructure. Let me also tell you, we also have capital. I mean, uh, I work with a lot of investors. The investors are looking for innovative ideas. Don't be under the impression, Are paisa kahan se lao, bank paisa nahi deta hai. That's all a myth. You have a good idea, you have innovative idea. I can guarantee you that innovation, uh, you will get funded, even government is doing a lot right from AICT to Ministry of Education to a lot of other agencies. I think someone from uh, some AIC's Atal Incubation Centers are also here. Let me be honest, funds are available. You need to have a good idea which can support or uh, be able to grab those funds, right? So focus on these things. Uh, don't focus on that brain drain. We have enough brains from IITs and ICTs and uh, IISCs and NITs and all that. Don't worry about the drain that is happening. Let us focus on things that we have with us and make India 
which we i think we are already a super power i mean uh, and just wait and watch in next 20 years we will become the focal point of the whole world thank you 100% agree with you sir so we consume a lot of content online and content creation has become one of the most prominent ways to promote your business how should the youth plan their content for india as well as foreign countries uh, Sarang sir, would you like to take this question? Or Kalp sir? I mean, interesting. I mean, continuing to the Nilesh sir, though the question is different, but I would also like to point out that few of my friends, like I, I've, I've just graduated in 2017 from again university. Um, so one of my friend, like very good friend, his name is Harshal Vibandik. He came from US. Um, and what he did is something very phenomenal. He went to US to pursue his MS in um, uh, finance, but then he realized there are a lot of things which you know which which need to be done in India. So he came back to India in his hometown by, by the name Dhule in Maharashtra. And what he did is something very unique. What um, so uh, he took only he picked only one particular social problem which he felt which need to be solved, and that problem was about education system. And then uh, what he did is basically he uh, completely changed all the digital, all the government school into digital schools. Okay. Uh, and that has, you know, that has become a record per se and many of the awards also he received. And now he's, you know, taking one step ahead, picking one problem at a time and trying to solve it. Um, I run a, I run a social enterprise by the name Donate Card. It's a, it's a crowdfunding platform. And when we say about a brain drain, you know, uh, like, I can probably say that 40% of the donations which we receive on the platform, it's completely from the Indian, uh, you know, NRIs who have been went to, you know, abroad and then they are, you know, transferring the funds to India for various causes. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of cases wherein they voluntarily help us to build our technology stack, where they also help us, you know, or share a lot of very innovative ideas which 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 can which which can be built in India, as well as you know. Um, Again, as Sir said, very interesting fact that you know a lot of uh, fintech product, a lot of edutech product, let's say Baiju's. Okay, it's an Indian company which is going out and and you know changing the entire world or the landscape of of edu edutech. Uh, Ola, for that matter, like they have been you know went outside from last I guess 2015 and they have been doing phenomenal. So I guess yeah, a lot of my friends and a lot of you know, Nilesh sir's friends come to India and came to India. And although if they are sitting outside India, they are contributing in some other way. Now, picking to the, the questions which you asked, like what kind of content? Uh, see, we, 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 like at Donate Card also, we produce a lot of, lot of content, okay? Uh, but we produce an emotional content because India is the country which has been, you know, driven by emotions. Unfortunately, we have not come to the stage where we, to, we take decisions by data. We take decision by emotion. Um, when it comes to the content creation, I guess it's this is the time and a lot of things has been happening wherein we need to create more and more content which will resonate with the with the larger audience of, of, of India, as well as we need to build more content for the real Bharat. So there is a there is a terminology, new terminology which is coming up, like you know, build for Bharat. So what Bharat, the definition of Bharat to be like, you know, in a simple word, in a simple word is basically entire India minus all the metro cities. Okay. Like you will get Bharat, the real India. So we need to build content which will, which will, you know, which will inspire them, which will make them, you know, think or give a different perspective for them. Okay, some of the companies which have been really doing, you know, great work in, in the content creation spaces, maybe Joe Stocks, they have been doing you know, a lot of regional content. I guess, I guess the more and more good content we curate, uh, I guess it will give a immense um, motivation to people or the youth to come forward and, and build some great product. And when we say like, we need to build a great product, I will tell you that one of the reason, uh, if you go um, like, Top, top searches which in Indian youth has been doing okay on Google is where I can find or uh, you know where I can find a government job is one of the top ten you know Google searches. Secondly, uh, one of the searches which has been declined over the you know years is uh, is the questions which starts from how. So we are not. I mean, gradually it's been changing. 
but again in in the real bharat the question was it it never start with it's never start with how okay or it never start with why it always start with what like i want i what i want to do but they don't realize that why i want to do what i want to do right so but now the slowly the changes change, change is happening and we are also you know people are people are reading a lot about purpose like what's the real purpose of life why like what's the real existence of of life right so i guess you know again the future is bright and eventually with the content with the various you know technological innovation facebook now they are they are trying to you know change the entire world into virtual reality they are building some amazing technologies technological stack i guess with this uh, you know uh, uh, great content in a social space especially content which is driven by and for bharat can really solve lot of challenges and can can uh, no uh, leave a mark in a society uh i couldn't agree more sir uh, if we if audience can't f- uh, find content online you will lose out on business probably so definitely online content is important uh so uh so what are the type of skills that young entrepreneurs should look out for uh at this stage of time kal sir would you like to go with this okay so uh it comes to skill part then uh, so you you will be reading those articles from buzzfeed or entrepreneur or forbes or such that these are the top 10 skills that will require in the future right and as rightly mentioned by nitish sir and saram uh, that's see uh, the most important thing is we have to work as per the market so Uh, obviously you guys have to carry out a bit of research but if i talk about skills then obviously coding uh, it was a big skill back some 10 years back but right now we are seeing that there are apis available that can uh, where you don't have to write codes right so uh, that is one thing that nobody should now think of going into uh, but obviously you need to understand how it works so anything in the business analysis or business analytics uh, that is a good uh, scope where you can go second thing is obviously fintech if if you understand finance and if you understand technology and if you can work in this field that you know that combines this then that is a great scope uh, the third is social entrepreneurship uh, uh, since saram also mentioned he runs a uh, startup called donate cart Uh, so what i am focusing on right now is if we talk about say the agri revolution or such so everyone is well aware about elon musk and his companies and such but on the side uh, his brother kimbal musk is working on a startup or a company called square roots right uh, so if you guys can see the video on youtube then they are working on uh, hydroponics and how to inculcate the organic farming in the students or the youth right from the junior kg level right so what they do is they ensure that field trips are set up for this child children and they understand how to inculcate technology in agriculture and how they can grow obviously countries like singapore have set up entire warehouses where they focus specifically on that so if if you think that this is something that you will be able to struggle for the next 10 years then uh, as rightly mentioned by nitish sir uh, the next 10 years are of india right and uh, if you have seen the analytics then presently we are a very youth focused economy but 25 25 years down the line we'll be all be aging at the same age right so it will be focused more on the old people side right or the senior citizens so any startup or any skills that you can you know expertise bring expertise in the next 10 years then you will be able to leverage once this shift happens so that is that so obviously uh, anything related to tech everyone has to learn coding everyone has to understand the logic behind the coding and business analytics fintech and obviously agri these are the few sectors where you should go and if thoda aage bhi aapko samajhna hai to you can always go for data mining and understand how crypto works crypto is something that is uh, going to change a lot of things but it depends if if you are invested in the correct you know uh, path and the correct source then thank you
definitely culture skills are what will help you grow in your entrepreneurship journey so politics is one controversial topic amongst the youth what measures should be taken to encourage young leaders to take an active role in leading our nation pangit sir we would like to have your views on this question see as far as politics is concerned if you are remember there is a case of uh, lady who came from us have done uh, she has done her mba from us and now she is one of the youngest sarpanch female sarpanch in rajasthan in our native so if we incorporate such kind of young uh, people in the politics and provide them the platform then we can change over a period of time by blaming just that the politicians are not working or they are corrupted we just have to move with them and we need to bring the change by going into the system see there are certain things which are not in a position to achieve by keeping ourselves outside that purview now as far as development is concerned see there was a case in our jodhpur a female who is a sweeper and she is a widow she appeared in a rajasthan public service exams and right now she is a uh, deputy collector in rajasthan so if we incorporate such kind of things in the society then we can certainly bring a change so uh, slowly and gradually with the municipal council or with the uh, village we can bring there are so many see uh, the political system of village is excellent in india and 72% of our population is in rural india so if we focus on that particular area then we can reform the rural part of our country and lots of agriculture development can be uh, carried out with the help of artificial intelligence and drone and all those kinds of uh, technology change in the agriculture sector and we can develop the exports potential from there so there there is a potential if we focus on rural part i couldn't agree more sir uh, the youth should get involved and uh, learn more things about politics so if the audience has any questions can i so can i also add I, i know it's a controversial subject but i don't mind uh, sure, uh, sure. viewing yes, the views uh, see politics also it's like onion it also has lot of layers right and typically when we say politics we think about the the politicians or the political parties but it's not only the politicians who are running the country there are bureaucrats there are technocrats there are other uh, even educational institute so a lot of uh, students can look to go into those kind of uh, positions it doesn't have to be actively in politics uh, you know nare baji karke running for election not necessary there are so many other like lot of committees get select uh, like you know like all these niti aayog people they are not politicians but probably they are the ones who are really um, uh, formalizing the future of our uh, of our country i know someone who is a chief innovation officer uh in ministry of education dr abhay jere he was he is a technocrat he has gone from persistent systems or persistent labs into that position right he he has no no affiliation to any political party or anything these lateral movements have also opened up so a lot of uh, uh, i think now niti aayog's head is uh, again uh, someone from tcs so a lot of these positions are also available we don't have to be aligned to a certain uh, political party you can still be part of the government and bring about the change so the and see every country has politicians every politicians and that structure has some plus and minus we we cannot overnight and make it untouchable also we have to live with the system we have to try to make the best out of it that's how i view i mean let us not think them as the evil or something who are against they also want our country to uh, uh, progress right so we have to understand where we can fit in Uh, in that overall uh, political system or the country running system that we currently have uh, in india uh, that is really insightful sir thank you so if the audience any questions now they can uh, raise your hand and unmute yourself or you all can type it in the chat box um sir i wanted to know what are the misconceptions the youth should know about the entrepreneurs or the startups uh okay 
so as i had said previously as well that uh, it's not the be your own boss thing as well as uh, it's not a very uh, easy or leisureful life as it may seem or whatever people say is ki agar aap startup karte hain then eventually you get funded and you get lots of funds and you can do this and that and not every idea is a cutting edge idea right uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to uh, achieve it also you have to be sure that whether the idea you are focused upon is it as per the present market or is it a futuristic one or have you left the uh, you know actual date so if you give if i give you an example there were meru cabs right they started before ola or uber but uh, they were very early to the market right but when ola launched it then they were at the correct time so you have to be very sure so that is one thing uh, and the major major uh, the kind of a taboo that i have seen with startups is uh, everyone reaches out to me ke sir agar uh, funding milta hai to hum kaam chalu karte hain right so that is a wrong way to approach entrepreneurship the correct way is you start working on it you obviously bootstrap you work hard when i say bootstrap you put in money yourself you work hard you generate some revenue there should be an innovation component uh, there should be enough employment generation as well and uh, eventually then after receiving some traction of some 20 30 customers or such that is when that uh, government is also very likely to help you out because if you see the support uh, if you say reach out to say us or singapore or any other mature ecosystems then it is 1 is to 9 okay if the startup or the founder box takes one step the nine steps are taken by the government we have still reached uh, somewhere where it is still 4 is to 6 or 3 is to 7 right if you take 3 to 4 steps then government helps you takes its 5 to 6 steps so that is one thing and and please please don't get uh, blindsided by the figures and the funding and this and that there is a lot of effort a lot of sacrifice involved while you are an entrepreneur so what i say is uh, agar aap entrepreneurship kar rahe ho be ready ki your third generation would be very happy right but you will have to give your entire life towards creating something uh, that eventually you will be called a legend after some 30 40 years right so yeah these are the few things thank you so much sir can i, can I also add prem sure sir sure um, so like uh, sir mentioned uh, if we look at the overall startup ecosystem hardly 2.5% of the startups actually get funded that to the curated one this is a statistic so what we see in the newspaper is only that tip of the iceberg uh, the actual iceberg is below so don't get swayed by so and so got a valuation of so and so million dollars and unicorns and today her dragon and god knows what will hear in another 5 years and 10 years uh, maybe dinosaurs and all that but uh, don't get a uh, Uh, swayed by those numbers yes we uh, start being a startup is glamorous and uh, but let me tell you it's a 24 by 7 thing first of a month or uh, 31st of the month even i have to dread ki how i'm going to get the money in the bank to pay the salaries of uh, the employees so it's not fun you have to pay all your other stakeholders including your rent electricity employees all the expenses and then you get paid so it's probably uh, really you know it's not as easy as it looks uh, of course it has its own pluses and a uh, lot of fun uh, involved but uh, i would take maybe another 2 3 minutes to tell you few things like especially if you want to be an entrepreneur uh, because i work with a lot of entrepreneur uh, startups as well as investors and we say that your startup should have five things first thing um, uh, what we call is whether you are fundable and the first thing is is there some innovation some uh, differentiation it could be an incremental innovation i am not saying all of a sudden you are going to come up with something totally new nobody knows about it but it can be an incremental innovation like an ola and uber it's not that taxi services didn't exist but it was an incremental innovation so whether you, is there something like that in your business second point is yes you have something innovative maybe 5% 10% better than the previous um, uh, existing model but can you maintain that innovation or can you maintain that competitive edge for example we talk about facebook today but facebook was the seventh uh, social networking site that was started i am i grew up in the orkut era probably you guys don't even know late 90s we used to have dial up 
and uh, so that's why i said don't think that i am more i have uh, probably used many more uh, social networking sites than you have but uh, orkut was one of the first ones today it does not exist microsoft took over and shut it down this is the scalability aspect and that can motors are getting funded right so scalability is very important and i think uh, kalp sir also mentioned that your idea of becoming scalable is very very important fourth is whether this business model will actually make money and fifth is whether this team will help me grow my money so these are the five aspects that i always tell every startup these are the five questions whether you answer an emphatic yes to all five of them if you answer yes then there is a chance that you will get uh, funded otherwise you can you know you will have to uh, refine your model where all these five questions uh, become um, uh, emphatic and you say yes secondly don't remember you are the first investor in your business so unless because you're going to invest your time money efforts everything so unless you think it's really worth it there's no point in just starting ke are startup able ke startup and like sir said that i always tell startups that chase customers be profitable at unit level if you are profitable if you are growing customers investors will chase you you chase investors and then you think that the customers will come to you that never happens so don't have uh, uh, that strategy and one last point i don't mean to take uh, too much uh, see whether there is a problem statement that you are startup is going to solve and the solution that you are providing like um, one of my favorite example, problem with the current uh, taxi model right you had to go find a gimme and lacunas in the existing model so whether the uh, you have defined a problem statement and 90% of the startups have not defined a problem statement they are like nahi i want to start a cloud kitchen i want to do this processing i want to do that business but why what is the problem statement is there a enough market for it is your solution good enough to address the problem statement nobody is given a thought to it they all think are i need that dpiit registration and i will be one of those 38000 uh, dpiit uh, recognized startups and you know then the funds will start coming in i'll put in uh, 30 under 30 and uh, all those things those uh, those are fine for a short period of time but end of the day when on the first of the month you have to pay the bills then uh, all those things don't matter you will have, you will have to make money is how because if you want to do a business it you have to make profits that's that's period no other uh, explanation to starting your own business thank you yeah so i think to that i would like to you know uh, share a few of my experience so uh, when i graduated from udc tech to Uh, no around 2017 i got a job like big fat uh, job at that one of the biggest mnc's i was a central placement coordinator one who was organizing entire the placements um so one of the things which you know most of the people have asked me uh, so they were very clear that i opted out from the placement and everyone used to ask me ki sarang like you don't have any experience how you can do it and and i hear this question a lot you don't have an experience without any experience how you can build a product without any experience how we can build a company you don't know marketing you don't know automation you don't know you know business development or sales um but the only thing the only one thing frankly i didn't had a skill set i don't think i didn't had uh, you know a single skill set that will able to make my product well the only one the, the only thing which i had is zeal is zeal to solve the problem i saw the problem the problem was very clear that you know in india there a lot of transparency in ngo space people are not aware where exactly they should contribute and and there's lack of transparency but i knew the i knew what are the solution which i have at max what will happen is i will fail but over the journey i will learn and and the another skill set is 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 to you know to bring or identify the people who will align or who will go align with your with your cause or with your purpose who wants to solve a similar problems which you have so the initial like you know it's a saying that like top 5 people of the company will make it or break it so you just need to find those top 5 people and and your job is not to do all the things like am i my frankly today i don't do like i don't do technology or i don't do bd there are people there are you know a, 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 a smarter people a smarter much smarter than me who is who is taking care of that particular thing the only one thing which as an entrepreneur one should have is the zeal to solve the problem 
and and as neelesh sir also you know very clearly said that you know to identify the problem statement well once you identify the problem statement well then you go deeper into solving those those you know those problem with the creative leadership with a very innovative problem statement one of the questions which i see in the chat box one has asked me you know how we can have a business model uh, in a social enterprise a very interesting question okay we we are a, we are a, we are a for profit for not for profit okay donate card is a is a uh, is a for profit social enterprise okay we have investors we have raised we are going at with a series a round uh, so uh, i feel you know business model per se there is you know a huge misconception as per i like my experience goes that we think ki theek hai hum logo ne first day mein jo jo pen and paper mein business model banaya wohi hamara business model last tak chalega uh aisa mere sath to nahi hua hai the mai jo bhi business model first place pe draft kiya tha that business model has evolved over the time we have changed again we have changed with business model 10 times we thought acha theek hai isse bana sakte hai kya paisa nahi chalo isse bana sakte hai kya and then eventually that has you know made us come to a point where one of the business models strike and then you could able to survive again the question lies the same whether this model model business model will survive we never know maybe you know a competitor will come and they might able to kill with a with a altogether new you know innovative solution so you have to keep innovating but the business model per se what you have asked don't i mean if you have if you have identified the right problem statement you have a solution go ahead you solve that problem and over the period gradually i believe if the if your if your solution is scalable if your solution is scalable then definitely you will come up with a great business model uh, for that matter facebook say look facebook didn't had a business model at the first place google didn't didn't had a business model maybe google had youtube uh, yahoo didn't had a business model at the first place over the period they they realized okay we have the scale now and now with this scale we can you know innovate something we can add we can run ad then they see they, they they hired a ceo and then that that particular lady has completely changed you know the the business paradigm of facebook so i guess you know you don't have to worry you know lot just identify the problem you know go with the flow just have the zeal if you don't have zeal again one thing which uh, sir has pointed out uh don't do start up for the sake of fame okay if you are doing it you will bound to you know your poise to fail i mean just do it to solve the problem you have to be very connected uh there is one saying which goes that until unless you don't feel that problem you won't able to solve it so you have to feel it you have to make it make it such a you know close to your heart that you will do anything and everything to solve it and once you have that zeal once you have that purpose everything everything can be you know sorted out thank you so much sir thank you pandey uh, your your insights really helped us get us a clear understanding of the future of uh, indian youth now i would like to hand it over to ruchita thank you prem that was an extremely insightful discussion we are ecstatic to have experienced such vibrant and diverse opinions from our esteemed guests the youth of india is definitely going to play a monumental part in the years to come we thank all our panelists for taking out time and expressing their views we thank mr kranti sagar more our principal in charge dr pooja ram chandani our vice principal in charge dr navin punjabi and our professor in charge ms charvi gara we would also like to thank our wonderful audience for joining in and being a part of this eye opening discussion Think India HRC will be back with many more panel discussions and events in the near future. Thank you once again and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.